in this video, the pop list method in Python. So let's start with a look at the docs. Pop takes one optional argument, which is the index of the item that you would like to pop or remove from the list. So important to state that again, that you're going to pass the index and not the item itself. You might also be wondering what these brackets are here on the left and right side. And that basically indicates that this is an optional argument. So let's talk a bit about the two actions that are going to take place with the pop list method. So the first is that you're going to remove the item from the list. And the second, see that and here? So And the second is that you're going to return it. So the fact that you're going to return that item is kind of what makes it different than the remove list method, uh, which we also have available here. But this video, we're going to focus on the pop list method, which again, removes the item from the list and then returns it. And again, this is an optional argument. And if no index is specified, pop removes and returns the last item in the list. So if you do not pass an argument, it's going to pop the last item in the list. Now, let's move over to the terminal and check things out. So I went ahead and created a list here called A, and this list contains three strings, this, is, and Python. And let's say we wanted to remove is from this list. We wanted to remove uh, this second string. How would we do that? Well, we would do a.pop, and then we would want to pass the index of that item in the list. So we know that is is at index one because lists start at index zero, right? So this is index zero, this is index one, this is index two, etc. So we're going to pass one to our list method. And what do you think is going to happen when we run this? Well, we are going to get our string returned to us. And when I check out A again, uh, that is item is gone from the list. So you can see that there's kind of two actions that took place, right? We returned the is string and we also removed it from our a variable, our a list. Now we could run this again. Uh, if I wanted to pop the this, uh, then I could pass zero because we know that this is at index zero. And we can see that we've returned this. And when we look at A, we can see that it now only has Python. And of course, uh, if you're not super, super strong in slice notation, uh, you can always check what's going on uh, within your list. So let's just say I added um, another value to the list, um, just so we could kind of have two values. So I'll add, let's say one, right? So now we have Python and we have one. Um, so how do we remove Python? Well, string notation tells us by, uh, and we can confirm this, that A0 is Python, right? A0 is Python, A1 is 1. Um, kind of a confusing example, but hopefully you guys are following along. And let's say we wanted to remove Python, right? So we have Python and 1. How do we remove Python? Uh, I think we know by now that what we want to do is A.pop0, and that'll return Python. And when we look at our list, Python is gone. We only have that, that one value left. And of course, if we run pop again, uh, we return that value, and now our list is empty. So we've popped every value from this list. Now, you might be wondering, what's going to happen if we run pop on an empty list? Well, let's do it and find out. If we do that, you can see that we've received an index error. We've tried to pop from an empty list. So that's something that you definitely want to avoid because this is a hard error. Now I've recreated our uh, this is Python list and I wanted to just double down on the idea of the index errors. So we know that the length of this list uh, is three. There's three values in this list, right? So we know that um, A2 is Python and that's the final value. So what would happen if we tried to do A pop, let's say 100 or just like five? So, so basically we tried to pop an index larger than the length of the list itself. What do you think is going to happen? Well, we're going to get that exact same index error, uh, pop index out of range. So same idea, um, you know, before we were running it on an empty list, this time we're running on a list that actually does have values. The thing is, uh, it has less values than we anticipated, right? So kind of two different ways 
uh, where you could run into index errors I've just showed you examples of and these are things you want to be aware of and errors that you want to avoid the next thing I want to do is just kind of double down on the idea of how we're actually returning values from the list and so what I mean by that again we have this is Python here and let's say I wanted to grab that Python string right I wanted to grab this string and assign it to a new variable do something with it well how would I do that well I could create a new variable and let's call this B right so we can do B equals a dot pop and we know Python is at index 2 uh, so we can do that and of course since we've created a variable here uh, we didn't have anything returned on the second line because it's been returned to this variable and if we look at B what do you think is going to be there? Of course, our string Python is going to be there. And if we look at A, uh, A, of course, does no longer has that Python string because we've kind of transferred that or popped it and reassigned it to B. So kind of just wanted to reinforce the idea that we are returning the value as well. And that can be really useful. And that's a common use case, right, is you want to assign it to a new variable. The next thing I want to talk about is negative indexes and how that would apply um, how that would apply to the pop list method. So we know our, our our list here has two values, and we know that if we did slice notation and we did say negative one, that that's going to return is, and if we did negative two, that's going to return this. Um, so basically, you're kind of working backwards, right? So let's just say I added some new values here. Mm, let's extend this actually. And we're going to put some, uh, I don't know, let's just put some random values here, right? So now we have our, our string, or sorry, our list, and we have a whole bunch of different values, right? And if I ran that same command, negative 1, what do you think is going to get returned? Well, it's going to return 7. It's going to return the last value in the list. And if we did negative 2, well, that's going to be 6. It's going to be the second last value in the list. Um, and how long is our list? Uh, we got what, let's six, seven values? Seven values, so if we did um, a zero, that is this. Uh, and also if we did uh, a negative seven, I think, that's also gonna be this, right? Because our length is seven and then negative seven, so, so that's why this, at, uh, this is the value at um, negative seven in terms of slice notation. Sorry if that's a bit convoluted, but the general idea is we have our list and we can kind of like work our way backwards. And that's what uh, slice notation does with negative values. So we can use slice notation or we can use negative values and the ideas from slice notation in the pop list method. And what I mean by that is if we did say pop negative one, we're gonna return that seven. We're gonna grab that last value and of course we've returned it as well and when we look at our list our seven is no longer there now you might be saying wait but that's just the last value negative one is the last value isn't the same as if we did it with no argument and of course it is um, we remember that from the docs and we can take a look at the docs again and see that if no index is specified pop removes the last item from the list so you could basically say that uh, pop without passing an argument and pop passing negative one are equivalent. So these two statements are 100% equivalent. The reason I'm bringing it up, A is to kind of point out that these two things are equivalent, but B is to point out that we can grab other indexes, right? So let's just say what? So what is at uh, negative three? Uh, three. So what's at negative two? Four. What's at negative five? This. So let's just say we're going to pop this. So uh, we can use our pop notation here, and we can do negative 5, and we've returned this. And when we go to our list, the this string is no longer there. So you can see how um, the slice notation and the pop are basically the same kind of idea, the same concept, the same slice notation is being applied. The last thing I want to mention is how the index errors that we looked at before also apply to negative numbers. So what I mean by that is, uh, let's just say, well, let's look at our list again, right? So we have a couple random values here, four values, and we know that if we did a dot pop 100, we're going to get that index error because it's out of range, right? 
So again, our list has four values. And if we did a dot pop negative 100, then we're going to get that same index error. So basically just pointing out that the index error uh, is going to happen for both negative numbers and positive numbers. Make sense? Sweet. So in this video, we looked at a lot of different applications of the pop list method. Uh, we looked at how we can uh, both remove and return values in a list. Uh, we looked at the index errors and what happens if you pass too large of a number or you pass a negative number. Uh, we looked at negative numbers more generally and how the, the overlap that occurs and the similarities with slice notation. Uh, so we've looked at a lot with the pop list method and hopefully you're now ready to go ahead and apply that to apply the pop list method to your programs. So at this point, just wanted to say thanks for watching. See you in the next one.